Today on Cosmic Disclosure, we are with Tim, a tactical advisor from Germany who analyzes and suggests various strategies in relation to extraterrestrial groups in contact with Earth. Also joining us today is Richard Doty, a retired counterintelligence agent who served in the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. Welcome, gentlemen. Today, we're going to be talking about portals and time. So we're going to get a U.S. perspective from you, Rick, and from you, Tim, of course, a German uh, perspective. So, Rick, you've seen so many documents about this type of subject. What could you start off with? Well, during my counterintelligence uh, career, I was assigned to Area 51, and one of the operations that I uh, perfected a counterintelligence operation for was uh, an operation or a project uh, that was run by the national, uh, national laboratories in investigating how to time travel, whether it was feasible, different methods and different procedures that could be developed to move from one area of time to another area of time. And so I actually developed the counterintelligence operation based on the project. Uh, most of the time when we get these projects in that we had to do a counterintelligence operation for, you just read a summary, the objectives, but not everything. I was so fascinated by time travel that I read the entire document, even the scientific portions of it. So what we were trying to do, what the United States government was trying to do is open a portal or a tunnel in the fabric of space in order to travel. And I'm not disclosing anything that's classified anymore. Most of this has is, is already been written about. Um, theories have been uh, I mean, they taught it in a, a college class at one at time. But what they were trying to do is perfect procedures. They used high energy uh, lasers. They've used um, magnetisms, high energy, uh, large ma magnets to shoot lasers and other things through a portal or create a portal, open up the time, and then try to figure out how to keep it open. And they were using different sheaths to put in there to try to keep it open. Uh, they were trying to uh, then maintain it with gases. They used, I know, argon gas and a number of other different types of gases they would pour, uh, send through these portals. And it, it actually worked. They were able to open it. The problem was to keep it open and to prevent any damage or injuries to anything that go, went through there. And they were using cockroaches to put through there. They were using uh, mice and rats and, and I, I believe some other animals. But nothing, uh, they couldn't perfect it at that time. But later on, they developed different techniques and different methods that were able to do that. What year was this? This was in the 1980s, early to mid-1980s. The project actually started back in the 60s. I think, believe San Diego National Laboratory started the project, and it was in the uh, elementary stages back then. Uh, scientists were able to document on paper how to do this, but then when they were trying to perfect it in reality, so to speak, uh, they ran on all sorts of different obstacles, weather, atmosphere, uh, all sorts of things that were preventing the, the time portal to open. They actually opened some, uh, but uh, it, they couldn't keep it opened uh, in order for any, at least humans, to go through there. And when they opened it, there was a lot of different things that had happened. When you open a portal, there were small explosions that are occurring. There were distortions of the atmosphere, distortions of the viewing. Uh, as you looked into the portal, there was so much distortion. And one of the things they de determined was they didn't know that this portal was going forward in time or back in time. And that was a big question on their part. They were perfect, trying to perfect things that could determine this, whether it, they were going forward or backwards in times. And eventually they did. They were able to perfect a way to open a portal. But the only problem is the portals were only open in the early days for a millisecond. And later on, they, they kept them open for a few seconds. And they perfected something calling a, a nuclear injection, where they had a small, very small nuclear detonation that they fired into, they fired this ball of nuclear material, I don't know how they did it, into the portal, and there would be a small nuclear detonation. That seemed to open it. 
And as they tried to put the sheath in there, and the sheath was made of some anti-magnetic material, it would stay open for a few seconds and it would close and destroy that sheath. Wow, fantastic. When I was there in the early 90s and was part of that project, they also were using special alignments. They found out that they had a, the earth and the different types of space alignments because there's ley lines also in space. And they still did not perfect it at all uh, where they could do it. So how about you, Tim? What, what have you heard and what have you experienced and read about? We know that Germany was probably the first nation in modern history um, that, you know, had experiments on time travel. Everyone knows that um, the theoretical physics that time can be approachable dimension, that is something Germans came up with in the 1920s, 30s. They did experiments on that. I think about the 1940s, um, their approach was to use high voltage in order to melt down the fabric of space, which can be used in order to, you know, mm, move temporal dy dynamics, but it's absolutely not stable. And it would also be um, pretty toxic for everyone who stands around that kind of field. So I'm pretty sure that they did not succeed in any way at that time in the 1940s to make it stable. What Richards was talking about, people have used that, the same mechanics, um, allegedly, you know, way back in the ancient times, where we find all those ancient sites that were indeed aligned to the different lines and star constellations. And they used the natural occurring um, energies in order to open certain gates. So you were talking about the 70s, 80s, I guess, and you were talking about the 90s. I guess it was about the 2000, 2010-ish years where the Greys decided to give at least a certain group of people on Earth the ability to have a stable and functioning technology. I'm pretty sure that that is you know, highly classified in terms of not everyone having access to that. So I think that the Greys took that pretty seriously and um, made access to only a very certain amount of people or a group of people. And they exist. So there are people that are going through these portals and they are also in a future version encapsulated in time of the Earth. And their mission is to have a look on how Earth is developing. And as far as I know, they are active in this time right now, even present. Yeah, I believe they're picking specific organizations and people that are going to be responsible for utilizing that. Yeah. Now, are because these portals also in space, not just Earth? So one thing I'd like to add is that temporal dynamics is capable of being weaponized. So one can build a very highly efficient weapon using temporal dynamics. And I think that is the reason why Grace decided to give it only to a very specific group of people. Rick, could you add to that? Well, one of the things that uh, was developed during the uh, experiments in time travel out at the Nevada test site in Area 51 was a peripheral part of the time travel projects. They developed, or they found that they could develop a energy weapon, a high energy weapon system. It wasn't the objective, but while they were experimenting over these years, they realized that there were some things that they could do to take advantage of these portals. They were in a process of developing, when I left, uh, an energy weapon. Was that, exactly a side, what was that a side effect? Was this, this energy weapon was opening a portal? Absolutely. It was opening a portal. And so um, when I left, they were trying to perfect it. And I think probably over the years, they, they, they might, might have done that. Uh, when I worked for a, a private a laboratory in, in Texas, we were able to look at some of the things that DARPA was doing in that area of perfecting this type of energy weapon. Rick, they're experimenting with opening a portal. How do they know what's on the other side? 
Well, one of the uh, objective was to determine exactly that and how they would measure it or how would they, they would see into it. So they had subcontractors working on that too. And so they developed some techniques and some equipment, which probably are still classified. I don't want to go into that part. Of it. But they had actually equipment, something similar to an oscilloscope that was projecting. They could determine wave patterns, the normal earth wave patterns. And when they opened the fabric, there was a strange wave pattern detected that we couldn't duplicate anywhere else but looking into that portal. So when this strange wave pattern appeared on their scopes, they knew that they'd opened the portal. Now, the problem was, at, in the early stages, they didn't know where that was going. Was that, was that going back in time or was that going forward in time? Now, eventually, they took this to an, another location in a, in a mountain in, in California, and they duplicated. And they realized that the wave patterns there were different than the wave patterns in the in desert of Nevada, at the Nevada test site, which was the main uh, location that they were testing this. So then ah, they figured, wait a minute, why is the wave pattern different there in California than what we had? And bingo, they figured, that's going one way because of the altitude or the area of the, of, of that where they're doing it in. And in Nevada, they, it was going someplace else. And, and when I left, and even, even when I worked for the private laboratory, this was being developed rapidly. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, so we all know that um, dimensions are units or a way to measure the location of something inside of space. So if we have three dimensions, we can, by using a triangular method, we have a way to figure out where in, in space something is located. So every particle um, in physics has a specific location, a specific position where it is. It's the same with temporal dynamics as using time and um, temporal factors as another dimension. The problematic and confusing thing is the geometric way how to see temporal dynamics. Because uh, every particle inside of a fourth dimension of temporal dynamics is also located to different other positions inside of this temporal dim dimension. And that also, you know, brings some challenges in order how to manipulate time because everything has an effect on the past and the future. So it kind of ripples from that position. Whereas when we're talking only three positions or three dimensions, it's a pretty, you know, hard and standardized process to locate everything. So that is something that people had challenges to fi figure out how to use that and also in order to you know, stabilize time, to not you know, interrupt the flow of time, but to have certain impulses on certain points in order to have the correct ripples that go around this position of where it's located. So I think what the Grace did teach people and brought them to is the algorithm and the way how to figure out and to use temporal dynamics. <laughs> <laughs>